so we've got a beam um, and all steel beams building regs require them to be covered in two layers of plasterboard so how are we going to get the plasterboard to stay up there on these two big lumps of metal it doesn't matter much what you use um, I've got some pieces of 4b2 that we've salvaged uh, I'm going to use them there's an odd bit of 3b2 there if you had 2b2 or even 2b1 2b1 is slightly a bit more fragile but uh, anything anything at all it's all going to be covered up so next step now is to get them all the right size so take some pieces of 4b2 or 3b2 or whatever this has already got a nice square edge on it so I'm not too worried about re-squaring it mark side there we go now I need to cut that nice and square and try it I've got a circuit of saw um, with a fence on it so once I've cut the first one all the others will be the same ok so we've cut that hopefully it's a nice neat fit let's have a try it needs to be in slack and that feels alright let's see how we get on Between you and me, that's perfect. I like showing off. Now what we need to do now, <laughs> I should have done it earlier, mark out where they're going to go. One every 400 is pretty good. Okay, so we'll mark them all up now. Okay, so we've got, um, we've webbed that beam out by putting 4B2s, it's only salvaged 4B2, but it's good, there's no woodworm or rot in any of it, um, into that beam. The other way of doing it, um, which is quite good, is to do it in this method so that you've come over the edge of the beam so that the plasterboard that's going to come up underneath has got something to fix to. Um, the other way is, which is a third method, is exactly the way we've done that one. Um, and then you screw a batten along the edge. Sometimes that's easier purely because by screwing the batten on the edge you've got a really nice straight edge to work to. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put our batten up. We want to be nice and flush with the underside of the beam. As I said before, there's lots of different ways of doing the beam. That's uh, this is as good a way as any. What I like about this is that if you have got cables and stuff you want to run, you can run them in, in the back there. Go. Let's see if I've got a 
board at the back here to keep that nice and flat. And then just a case of snip it and cut it. And then we have a nice straight craft inch piece. Okay, I've cut me piece of plasterboard. I've made sure at the edge, I've cut right the way through it, so I've got a nice neat edge and I've used a, a, a no, I've got a nice neat edge there. That's going to go up there and act as a guide for me to fix this one then here. And I'm cheating, I've got myself a third hand. You know what? In building, you've never got enough hands. There we go, that just prop that up, hold that in place. And we're ready to go. Okay, I've made sure this is proud so when the board goes up it's holding that, it, um, it supports the top edge. That goes up so, come down, need that. That's flush, that's flush. I've marked where the, um, I've marked the joist under here, so I know where they're going, I'll put a line through where the where the battens come. This is the hardest bit. There we go. And that's flush. And then this piece comes down flush with the bottom of that. And that's the second piece. So now that is two thicknesses of plasterboard. You can see longer screws so they go right through both sheets and into the batten. There we go. I won't bore you with screwing them all in. But there you can see one, two thicknesses, one, two thicknesses on the battens, cement. Packing the packing that out. Huh? There you go. Good luck. Right, as you can see, there's two thicknesses of plasterboard. All the joints staggered.